What's up, everybody? It's Indigenous Realist, man, and I'm the realist. I'm bringing this video about etymology. It's not an actual long video or giving much information. It's just giving the seven canons of etymology. And they're very important to be in use with my other videos when I talk about etymology. Thank you, man. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share the content. Check out all my other videos, man. The truth will be heard regardless. This video is entitled The Seven Canons of Etymology. Before I go on to explain the seven canons, I must state that I'm not affiliated with any groups at all. I was raised from a dead state of mind in a shallow grave onto the square by way of a living perpendicular. I came into the study of etymology by way of Noble Drew Ali. I'm not a member of the Moore Science Temple of America. I've never even seen a Moore Science Temple of America's temple in person. But I consider Professor Drew to be the father of all indigenous and so-called black or comedic thought. But that's for another day. I just wanted to clear the air so truth may resonate faster. Number one in the seven canons. Before attempting an etymology, asserting the earliest form and use of the word and observe chronology. That means before even attempting to apply etymology to a certain word that we think we know, we must find the earliest form and use of the word and observe how it moved through a timeline. Number two. Observe history and ge geography. Borrowings are due to actual content. That means see how the words pass from one nation to another, one tribe to another, one people to another, one shore to another. Number three, observe phonetic laws, especially those which regulate the mutual relation of consonants in the various Indo-European languages at the same time comparing the vowel sounds. See, I don't agree with this because... Indo-European languages aren't the first languages, but we'll go with that for now. Number four, the whole of a word and not a portion only ought to be reasonably accounted for. And in tracing changes of form, any infringement of phonetic laws is to be regarded with suspicion. See, they can't take a part of a word and say, oh, this is this comes from this because it got the same three letters. Nah, brother, we need the full part of the word, man, to be called etymology. Number five, mere resemblance of form and apparent connection and sense between languages which have different phonetic laws or no necessary connection are commonly a delusion and are not to be regarded. And uh, number five is really important, man, because a lot of people think just because a word looks or sounds like another word that it means the same and that's not the deal number six when words in two different languages are more nearly alike than the ordinary phonetic laws would allow there is a strong probability that one language has brought the word from another truly cognate words ought not to be much alike number seven it is useless to offer an explanation of an english word which will not also explain all the cognitive forms. See, English is a mutt language. English is composed of so many other languages that it, the video would take hours to put how many languages are in the English language. It is a mutt language. It is bred by other languages. Is that true, though? Can we question the fact that English is not old and that English is a new language? Can we question the fact that anybody... That, that Europeans are indeed the, even the fathers of the English form in English language. And I think differently. I don't think English is a European language. I, I think that's an indigenous language. I think English was made by us for us. And I'll show you why. And it has a lot to do with the royal family not being so royal at all. And it has a lot to do with the time schedule for certain kings and queens in certain languages just don't add up. Just don't make sense. It sounds like more stories that were just being told to pacify us. But I'll explain that in other videos. I just wanted to do the uh, seven canons in this one. I'm Indigenous Realist and I'm out, man. Please like and subscribe my channel. Share this video. Check out my other videos entitled Dane Calloway is Right. Question everything. Even Martin Luther King. In my other video entitled, Dane Calloway is Right, Question Everything, even Rosa Parks. And also my first, my very first video is called R.I.P. Pan-Africanism, Indigenous Realist Etymology. 
And this is like a second part to that. A lot of people will miss these seven canons of etymology and swear they know how to use etymology correctly because I won't be putting Dan Calloway's name inside of this title because this is a personal video and it relates to his question and everything topic, but it also doesn't relate and forms the facts that I researched for myself. I'm indigenous realist and I'm gone.